three, two, one. Ashley Gass, a Canadian of Florida, merging gymnastics strength training, calisthenics with traditional strength training, nutrition, mobility, stretching, movement, and strength. MoveGST.com. Firstly, let me apologize uh, for the very inconsiderate Australian wildlife you will hear in the show. Bloody crows and kookaburras. Uh, but I do digress, so <clears throat> on with the show. Ashley Gass, owner of MoveGST.com, based in Florida, successfully grew her business during the dark ages of 2020 to 2022. And I was intrigued to find out exactly how she did it. The answer lay in three words, <laughs> evolve, grow, and disobey. The lockdown saw the team launch online in 2020 at a time that much like Body Synergy Gym that's been on the show in New Zealand and Eden did and stayed ahead of the curve rather than being behind the eight ball. We spoke about former Olympic coach Chris Summers programming and how it saved her body post-neural surgery by simply following the process from baby beginner steps to where she is now, it works. Ash has adapted the exercise programming uh, at Move GST though, to continue uh, to combine gymnastics with traditional strength training, like kettlebells, dumbbells, etc., And they achieve phenomenally surprising fat loss results with teaching nutrition, mobility, stretching, movement, and strength. We talked about the similar similarities of our processes with clients using empowering nutrition trusting the programming and not being too tied to the process of weight loss to achieve great success for the people who are ready to learn. And I suggest that's the key. Experts like uh, Professor Andrew Huberman, uh, Dr. Peter Atia, Rob Wolf came up in our discussion. It was great to share the synergies in what we learn, teach and use in, in both of our daily lives. Ashley Gass is an underrated wealth of knowledge and I'm sure you will love watching her videos on Insta at, and check the links, they're there, uh, Ashley R. Gass, and on Facebook, Ashley Gass uh, CSCS. Uh, all the links are down there. Check them out, all in the show notes. You can find Ashley at um, Move Training Calisthenics and Ashley R. Gass, as I said, on Instagram. And of course, check out movegst.com. Thank you so much for watching. Hi, thanks for watching. I'm Damien Porter, former Special Forces Operator, and check out my new project for 2023 at hownottodie.com.au, where I've combined all my Special Forces training and police officer experience to help others. Thanks for watching. And we're live. Welcome to the Straight Talk Mind and Muscle podcast. Uh, New shirt today, Two Wolf Syndicate, gone from uh, blue to white just for the one show. Uh, quick one on these guys, uh, veteran-owned business here in Australia. And even though they're Australians, I'll support them because it's pretty cool. Uh, there's an interesting story about Two Wolves. Uh, look that one up. Uh, Ashley Gass, welcome to my guest all the way from USA once again. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Dee. We we go back along many many years, and this is our our second podcast span over what eight years. Yeah, brilliant. Um, it's it's been a long time, and it, it blows me away the technology that we can do this. Um, so yeah, uh, good morning from a Kiwi in Australia to a Canadian in Florida. <laughs> good morning to you. It's six uh, six a.m. there Thursday. Yeah, yeah, six a.m. Yeah, three early starts, three shows. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for me. Well done. Well done. Uh, I'm so, so we're, excited to be chatting again. Very <laughs> much. <laughs> Look, two fish out of water, but but successful. And, and that's what we're going to talk about, your success. That's why I wanted to get you on, um, uh, especially your journey over the last sort of three years. Phenomenal. Um, I'll just do the quick bio. I mean, it's, we're going to do the video uh, prior uh, for the show notes. But for the listeners now, uh, you've got a, a great resume. And on, on the Move GST uh dot com website brilliant resume uh, off the insta and just the, the snapshot you're really heavily heavily um are skilled in nutrition which is brilliant you know certified nutrition specialist certified sports nutritionist which we're going to um going to push to and sort of the second uh, second part of the interview but you run move gst now 
let's talk about what that is for the person that doesn't doesn't know it. Uh, when I think gymnastics, I think oh, I've got to be well. First, I'm probably the the wrong sort of sex because females are amazing gymnasts. But then, do I have to have started it at, at, at like in my in my single digit years? So let's talk about Move GST, what it is, and then we'll talk back to um to where it sort of started for you. Yeah, cool. So. All right, Move Gymnastics Inspired Strength Training is, uh, well, we're actually considering a name change to Move Strength Training Calisthenics so that the name doesn't get, you know, we don't have a lot of parents calling anymore trying to get their kids in gymnastics, but back in the day before we were known, that was sort of a thing. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, everybody knows the Gymnastics Inspired is is a carryover from the gymnastic body uh, days, which yeah. is, which is um, so what is it? If I can really accurately describe what it is that we do is we literally do merge traditional strength and conditioning. So lifting heavy stuff, dumbbells, barbells, kettlebells, all the stuff people know to be strength training work uh, with mobility, stretching. Uh, Jason's an absolute ninja master expert at teaching like uh, movement, tumbling, soft acrobatics. So folks come into the gym generally having researched us and they go, you know, I've been looking to get better at calisthenics and the gymnastic side of CrossFit for a while. And I, this is, this is the place, this is the place to be. We get a lot of that. So that's what we do. And we, we specialize in our work with adults. Uh, some are, uh, some have been um, sedentary for a number of years and are looking to get their game back. Others uh, are, you know, hard charging athletes and want to add that dimension to their training that would take them a lot of digging around on YouTube and kind of filtering out who knows what and who doesn't and who, you know, who to listen to for them to figure out on their own. So they come to us for that journey. Perfect. Perfect. So merging strength training with mobility, stretching and movement. I love that you've crayoned that for me, um, but specializing in adults. That's an interesting thing. And I think this is where a lot of places go wrong. And also, more importantly, a lot of people go wrong. You said you can cater for the sedentary person, the person who sort of, I'd suggest, let it go or, you know, was it was a high, it's like Al Bundy, the high school athlete, um, but also the, 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 you know, the high end person. How do you do that? Because that's two completely different ranges. How can you do that? And how do you do it? And I've seen you, your success stories are phenomenal. Yep. Okay. So our sequence is pretty clear. Um, every new person that comes into the facility, we've had a conversation with on the phone or quickly on text. So they reach out to us and they're filtered out. I'll, I'll get their contact information really quick and I'll have a quick chat to so say we have 15 new people in a week. Um, every single one of those folks has had a, a real person reach out and chat and find out a little bit what it is they're looking for. Then they go straight to an intro class and that's their opportunity to come into the facility, check it out, um, jump into the class and just get a feel for, I really like this place or no, not so much. And the, you know, the, the latter doesn't happen very often. Um, and from there, we actually have, so people don't just go straight from that intro class to all the classes. If that were the case, we'd be in some dire trouble because yeah. we wouldn't accommodate those ranges. Um, but we do a fundamentals program instead. And we created that program about three years ago to bridge that gap between coming to a class and training in all classes so that that person's coach and every member has a coach. Every member has a coach. They don't just disappear into the classes never to be spoken with again. Everyone has a coach. So say that uh, someone goes through fundamentals with Jason. Jay has that time with them privately to go through uh, curriculum uh, that is, we've designed it, but it's also custom to them. It's either curriculum kind of at a beginner level or an intermediate or an advanced level. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're well, well versed in uh, upper body basics, lower body basics, mobility basics, spine prep, thoracic prep, handstand prep, and then a summary of all of it. So by the time the fundamentals process program is finished, Jay knows a lot about that client and he's been tracking those sessions and the client knows a lot about Jay and the process and they're no longer scared to come to the classes and they know, mm -hmm. Hey, like this guy knows that I've had, uh, I had rotator cuff surgery seven years ago and I can't do some of this stuff. And, and that's just how we do it. So, um, that's how we do it is we actually prepare everybody for classes at their own level. And then once in the class environment, We've just got this incredible membership of people who are supportive and uh, competitive uh, and 
very welcoming to um, somebody new. Yeah. And you put all that together and it, it works. We've got, yeah. we've got thin, we've got fat, we've got old, we've got young, we've got some kids, we've got, and it really boils down to the process of, of customizing things from the minute they walk in the door and coaches, thank God, that are so good at what they do that they know how to craft that process to make someone have a really good training experience. Before we started, before we hit record, Ash, we were talking about Michael Don Vito. And thank you for the introduction. Um, you know, fifth degree jujitsu black belt and literally 10 or 11 black belts. And yesterday I interviewed uh, Jason Swartz, jujitsu 5 0, um, a cop, and, and now he's a jujitsu um, um, instructor. Now, with jujitsu, when I see it with taking taking my boy, it's so respectful and so uh, all encompassing. It's very welcoming. It's not uh, daunting, and I thought it would be. It was in my day. The karate yeah. we went to and the judo was freaky. The big guys, and I'm getting the sense from watching what you do and the idea there. It's probably the same sort of encompassing um, mentality uh, environment because I'm getting the idea. If I go along, you, you wouldn't make me feel awkward and out of place. I as you said, meet me at my level and then understood to get there. And then you said also competitive. And this is why I'm asking this question. Competitive, but healthy competition, right? Maybe within themselves. Yeah, everyone's there to get the best training session possible day in, day out, and to get to the next skill progression or to get the handstand. So they're competitive within themselves, but they're not eyeing each other up and you know yeah, in, yeah. in your day it's, it's funny and it, particularly with Don Vito's background is you should you showed up at the dojo and they were like oh we're gonna kill this guy <laughs> this, is his last. this is his last if he leaves here alive he deserves <laughs> to come back <laughs> you yeah. know and similar to you know with me with the combatives in Canada but that was forever ago not even worth talking about compared to what you guys have done but we're, we're just in a different, we're in a different place. I mean, there's, there's probably dojos that exist and obviously within, you know, the private sector and, and, and military, that would still be the case, but um, most people can go to environments now and they're welcomed and it's not a harsh welcome and, you know, Hey, there's the new guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> that, that's okay. again, look, look for me, I, I, I got the gymnastic bodies program, like I see four or five years ago um, online. So it's all video um, with, you know, the American um, gymnastics, I think, junior coach, Christopher Summer, who started it. Jesus, just the, just the video was daunting. I was like, wow, you got these amazing gymnasts. And it was very difficult. And it, what the progression, not, Chris is a great coach, clearly, uh, but it just wasn't laid out in a manner that crayon guy over here could understand. Um, that wasn't a, a gymnast. You know, he's, he's, he's 45 years old trying to do a, a front lever or whatever it is. But again, your success stories and the and the videos we've seen, these people are going from here to here and they're happy, you know, showing their progression, of even just trying to touch their toes. And you obviously do it in a, in a great way. Um, my question then is, what the hell got you into this? What you got you into gymnastic strength inspired training and what you do? And then you obviously bought this this uh, this facility, this, this gymnastics uh building so like what sort of what led to move ultimately yeah, so essentially yeah so what got you into gymnastics training and and might be the same what what got you into move yeah the same so i uh, and i'll do uh, i'll uh, so the six the coffee table success stories that you've seen uh, that you're alluding to i'm going to do an interview next week just to chat about that because it's been i haven't i haven't really properly gone on record to explain the story of move and i i realized that so I, I i put a post out the other day just for fun um you know about the story of move and i'm gonna actually talk about it because it was it was nine years ago and wow. nine i know i i went whole, like <laughs> oh, that was nine years ago that was nine years ago that i just was like holy shit you know in my mind it's still three or four years ago at most um so i mean i got lucky is how I got into gymnastic strength training. Um, you know, it, I, it, it had been three months post neurosurgery. I was, you know, just I did doing my thing. I was training, 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 listening to podcasts, uh, 
uh, prepping for a figure show. Um, I knew like I, I I had to train myself to walk again in like the stage heels because I, oh, I, I lost the ability to walk normally. When you lose your when you lose your S1 dermatone and your kills reflux and your foot and your calf and everything just goes like bottled up, you can't like you you don't, you don't, you can't st stand on your toes. Like you can't do calf raises on that side. It doesn't neurologically exist. So yeah. um, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to, and sorry, I'm going to swear. Probably it'll, they'll, they'll come out on this show and you know, whatever. <laughs> and um, most of them are not for kids. <laughs> on YouTube is not for kids. It's okay. <laughs> okay <good. laughs> so, you know, I just was like, I I'm going to learn how to walk in these stage heels again. Cause you can't do figure shows. If you can't do that, that's just part of the deal. So I was listening to Rob Wolf's podcast interview with Christopher Summer, whom I'd never heard of. I'd never heard of gymnastic strength training. I think calisthenics was a word we threw around. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and he, Chris uh, Summer talked about back pain and how one of his athletes was going through back injuries for the first time after leaving his care. That was Alan, actually, when Alan graduated and went off to college, he was in a, a different training program and uh, not under the close tutelage of Christopher Summer anymore. And so he started to have back injuries. And that caught my attention because obviously from what I'd been through, I'm like, well, despite all the education and all of this and all of that, years and years and years of extracurricular study, not mm -hmm. like text study, but all the other courses and clinical stuff I'd taken, there I was, you know, with three months post-op and, you know, things were getting tight. I mean, I was, I was like, okay, he's talking about back pain. Let me check this whole thing out. So yeah. kind of like what you did. I just, I went and that was when everything was available as a, you know, a big package to buy all the stuff. And so yeah. I bought all the stuff. I had no idea what I was getting into. I didn't care. I cherry picked all of it. I had my own judgments on the front lever level one. I was like, <laughs> what, is that? what is that stupid drill? The guy like rocking around on the floor. And I just, you know, I picked what I thought was my level and yeah. I started there. And quickly went to a level one in Texas. That was the first workshop. And Summer just crushed all of us. This is, we were in this CrossFit gym, yeah. 50 athletes at least. And he just, during warmups, sit down and do an L sit, lift your legs off the floor. And everybody was half dead after that. And he just makes like, he's like, how are you guys even functioning as athletes? You're wow. a bunch of, yeah, it was embarrassing for all of us. But I think he has fun with it because he, he, at that point, he was so used to, um, how bad the public really, how, how bad the public really was. Even if it's a group of like fit people, he could just level them in the most like just low level gymnastics strength training warm up with your body weight. And people were like unable to lift their legs off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. that was a big eye opener for me. And that's when I stopped cherry picking the information and I went, yeah. okay, we're going to go to the foundation one basics. I would spend my weekends. I typed the entire curriculum up. I still have those papers at the facility. And I just was like, okay, understood. And I just started from the bottom, worked my up and then just figured, just layered it in with my own training over time and became, uh, went to several level ones, worked with Summer and the crew for a number of years. And so I got lucky. I really, I got lucky. Wow. Uh, you make you Thank like you, you make Rob you. <laughs> <laughs> who's coming on the show soon i, I kirk parsi was over here with the the triple seven navy seals um skydiving record and, and other veterans as well like um logan stark from black rifle coffee and and um some jtf2 guy a, a jtf2 guy as well um they were, with, uh, they were with you in perth yeah so um that their last jump to complete the world record was here in perth and they all we all hooked up uh which was amazing and um it turns out uh, Kirk and Rob um, uh, circuit together uh, doing uh, lecture lecture tours. So Rob will be coming on the show uh, show soon as well. Awesome. I'll yeah. ping him and be like, hey, have you interviewed Rob before? Have you guys? So, are you oh, look, as soon as I reached out to him, he said, yeah, I'm keen. And of his uh, his PA or secretary, whatever, assistant, um, gave me a time where it was three in the morning here every time. I was like, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit off for the time. And she, and she said, well, that's all you can do. So I was talking to Kirk and she said, no, nah, no, nah, I'll get it. I'll, I'll sort it out. So it's great to share that knowledge. But look, you, you're humble, um, Ash. You, you do make your luck because um, let's be real. You were A, uh, post-surgery, three months. Uh, B, looking for things. C, you went and paid all the money. So you made your luck. D, you wrote the curriculum out yourself. And now that's where I wanted to get to. 
hang on a sec, you pay the money, you don't understand what's going on, where are we here? And then you got to print the curriculum out yourself. Perfect <laughs> example of why we're here doing this, uh, this show, because that's not what I see with these people that are unable um, to you know, bend over almost, and then they're, they're touching their toes and doing these amazing uh, things health-wise and functional-wise. They're not gymnasts and they're not trying to be, but they're functional. And <laughs> from memory, you're a bit of a rock as well um, uh, in your flexibility uh, and some of the videos you put out, and, and now you're, you're easily functional. So that must have been nice, but that's a few years of perseverance. Um, so for personally... Um, what was that like? Was it just determination, self-discipline and keeping at it to get over your injury and get to where you are now? Because you do some amazing stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I mean, I guess the best I can do to answer your question is I, I, threw, I, I threw all my trust at it without having any idea what I was getting myself into. And who know? I don't know why I did that. Uh, I don't know, because I didn't know Summer. Uh, I knew Rob. Um, I don't know. So you, I trusted, don't know. Uh, you trusted the program and the program works because it's done by the right people. Yeah, but I, I mean, I had never heard of gymnastics strengthening or Christopher Summer. So I, I think that really what it was is that interview just it, 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 it hit a, a, a part of me that I, I really wasn't paying attention to yet that just sort of said, follow like just follow just just do it so i'm like okay fine um i didn't even know enough at that time to, to question it i just bought it and um i followed and um uh i just remember doing the middle split series those of those of you who are listening to this that have spent you know months once a week doing middle split series you know what i'm talking about it was brutal and i was i was so bad i was laughing at myself on the floor <laughs> doing it and um so i just i just kind of i i blindly trusted the the process and yep. uh i had to go against everything i mean there's spine biomechanists that i think still teach that lumbar flexion isn't really what we should be doing particularly under load and um so i had to overcome those cuz that stuff I, I had learned really nothing but that for many years and so mm just folding over with a PVC pipe hurt. And, you know, my, my flexion was really neutral. I mean, I couldn't, mm. I couldn't flex my lumbar spine to save my life. So I don't really know how, I don't know why I stuck the course because I didn't know any better, but I didn't know any better. So I just stuck the course. And um, I, I think it was actually probably going to uh, a couple of level ones where the weekend of training was so hard, but so I, I, I would leave, the day of training on a Saturday and be completely wiped out, but my joints felt less shitty in my oh. neck and in my low back. So I was like, okay, I need to pay attention to this handstand material because I totally wrote off handstands. I didn't give a I didn't give a shit about handstands. Yeah. And I, I hadn't connected shoulder mobility in the thoracic spine into handstands yet because I had never trained handstands. I mean everything yeah. we did was just overhead pressing as you know. Of course. Um, and rotator cuff work and you know scapular thoracic work. So it was probably cementing the, the 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 icing on the cake was going to a couple level ones and feeling what it was like to not have quite as much joint pain after an entire day and then weekend of of fairly rudimentary training. So, someone like yourself, who's come out post surgery, so you're below function, and you came off obviously. You, you said you were going for the stage show, so. For, for the listeners and i know your background you're talking about a figure athlete figure competition of some kind on stage so you've had to be in great shape and in and, and in the gym uh, and then someone like crystal hatch who was just like an office worker you guys are not um <laughs> not supposed to be uh gymnasts that gives someone like me um and crystal hatch has been on the show that's that's why i mentioned it for people to look back um someone like me hope that you can go from zero and in your case you're actually rehabbing to actually progressing forward into these great positions um again the people that come along to your gym you've obviously over those nine years of, of this journey you've changed molded how you're teaching because clearly you're a, a born teacher and that it's so important to get the message across the right way because summer sure as hell wasn't he crushed you in the level one and uh and for me, his communication 
was poor on the videos. Um, how, not, I'll just get the right question for your beginners. How do you not do that to your beginners? Because that's what you had. Did you just go, well, hey, let's, I don't want those people to have that sort of experience. I want them to have a better experience. Uh, okay, good question. So the environment of move is different. And, and I want to also clarify too, that um, I, for the most part of always doing the always working one on one with people at the facility, I gradually stepped back from that about three years ago. So I do a lot of work with people in the online space, some at the facility, but it's very rare. Um, because of the obligations and everything of actually just like quarterbacking the whole entire business now. But yeah. so how, how do we create that environment? I would say that um, it's a different environment. So when you're in a two-day workshop, the, the, the volume and intensity of what's delivered has to be pretty like fast paced because you really, they were really trying to, to cram in a fair bit of material in a short period of time. So mm. I think the intensity has to be higher than knowing you've got folks that are going to be with you for months and years. So I think yep. that might be a different environment. Um, and then just the, the coaches like with Jay, Jorge, Chase, Chris, um, the guys are their their approaches as, as young, young men, you know, age 26 up through mid thirties, their approach as human beings is not, like what you and I were really exposed to, they're they're soft. They're in a good way. They're 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 softer. Yeah. Uh, they they're in an environment where they want to know about what's happening with their client before they jump in and start doing things. And yeah. then when they start jumping in and doing things, they're they're quickly able to recognize, hey, this person needs a little bit of. So it, I guess it's just it's just a it's a more personalized, softer approach than a two day uh, seminar where it's like, you, you gotta like, you gotta, you gotta move through the material if you want to get it done. Kind of, I think. And it's, sorry, we're outside. So you might hear some of the uh, Australian nature. Uh, I, was gonna, like, uh, I, was, I was like, we don't have a baby. Are we listening to <laughs> and I've got listening? a And I got a lapel mic. Uh, I, I did bring the, the, the fly. Have you seen one of these things? This is a, this is a fly gun or salt gun. So it's, it's it shoots salt for for the flies that are here. But um, I did bring it out in like, case those birds go crazy. Pissed off animal. <laughs> hey, look, um, really, what you're saying is it comes down to communication. And yes, again, the communication uh, in the modern world has changed. Um, the rapport, and that's actually one of the most important things. The key determining factor in sustaining i think the study was sustaining a uh, a fitness program was how well the person has rapport with their coach so there you yeah. go you, you you answered it without me stating that right. prior um perfect right. I, I, yeah, i've i've packaged up move gst i packaged up a bit of your journey there because i really wanted to focus on the the business side of things and why the success is there for the clients um i'd like to put in the missing part there we touched on which is the nutrition side, because you really focus on nutrition and a surprising amount of weight loss. <laughs> yes, I just, I love the background. Sorry, I'm not making it easy. I just, I, um, okay. Uh, so so the they're crows. There's, there's like a million birds here. Thankfully, these aren't some of the uh, the nine things that want to try and kill you in Australia. But these crows <laughs> came out in the morning and were surrounded by beautiful uh, trees, which is nice. But yeah, that can wear a bit thin. I just, I just love it because we've been friends for so many years. I find it absolutely hilarious that we've got this, these animals in the background. They're like, whoa, you know, he's on a podcast. Let's go crazy. It's really, I just, it's kind of, it's really endearing. Um, okay. So I'm sorry, the, the nutrition piece. So nutrition is really interesting. And, and uh, Peter Tia and uh, Andrew Huberman have both said, you know, if you want to get into the world of the chaotic and the ridiculous just go into the world of nutrition. <clears throat> and uh, I agree. Um, I'm studying Huberman. I, Pierre Atia and Huberman are really the two guys I study in that field probably more than anyone at the moment. So just kind of, kind of getting back my brain back into that clinical research side of nutrition because I've had to take my brain away from that 
as a full-time gig for a few years to handle all the, all the business stuff and not be an idiot with the business. Um, man. Yeah. But it, it, it also, the journey back into it reminds me a little bit also of why I, I took a bit of a step back because when I was exclusively, this is before move, when I was working with folks one-on-one, I was so, I was attached to everybody's results. And I thought that everyone cared about their success physically as much as they said they did and as much as I did. And I, I'll never forget the moment where it was years and years of years of, of giving people advice based on their lifestyle and what they needed and wanted to blah, 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 giving them research. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow, people are going to do whatever they're going to do what they're going to do exactly as they want to do it. No matter what, no matter what they learn until they're actually so sick of whatever's happening that they themselves are willing to change it doesn't matter what article i give them or the link that is sent or hey did you know about this and that, that this and they found this no nope. none of it's almost none of it matters until that person goes i really am i i really have to change this I, I, was like, I must make a i must make a point there to to concur um you're absolutely right and that's a phenomenal realization uh that that you're too, too you were too, you were more invested in their their goal than they were that's that's a great realization because we're thinking it's just give the information just just um communicate it differently every other style um i was working with a client uh i don't do much of it now i've transitioned to the how not to die guy stuff but still working with a client who um was sent to me from new zealand uh his nutrition's going great uh stress response is great working with the psych as well for that which is cool um, but the sleep, his sleep was like six to seven hours. And at week four, it's like, well, you, you were missing that piece. You're getting good sleep for what you're doing, but we need to get that up. And so all he did was rework the timing. He goes, okay, well, I'm, I can't get to bed earlier, but I can sleep a bit longer. And he just added an extra hour on. He was totally ready. He just went, well, that's logical. Okay, I'll tick this in. He's like a businessman. But that person that's not ready, wow, you've sort of blown my mind there, Ash. Um, you did right. So that must have been a weight off your shoulders. It was, it was a tough point to come to. And I'll ask you sort of a question too, is, you know, how did you handle with this guy? You gave him, you gave him the data and he went back and he goes, ah, okay. I can apply this in this way. He did that. How did you handle the folks that you'd give the data to? And three months later, they're still like fumbling in the own, in, the, in their own like mind of scrambleness. What did you do? I've naturally filtered them. So I don't get so many of those people that aren't ready because they filter through the price and, hey, I'm a bit of a weird guy. And what, what is some special forces guy doing sleep session nutrition when I just want to go get fit? So they filter through first. That's one of my um, uh, ways. And that's took it take a long time. But um, I don't know how I could personally handle if I was doing my best, if the person wasn't responding. It would be illogical. And in my crayon brain, there would be illogical. And I, I guess I... Those people don't gravitate towards me, Ash. Um, I'm kind of lucky. But in the past, I don't know. I can't answer your question how I handled it. In the past, when I was a personal trainer in the gym, it would just, um, it would just, it wouldn't compute in my brain. I'd be going, but I said okay. this and you're doing that. Um, right. And what they did, I don't know how I handled it. I, I didn't have a solution, put it that way. I had no solution. What did you, so what have you come up with the solution? Well, it granted in that uh, most of this work now on the nutrition side is, it is remote. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean I don't, it doesn't mean I don't have communication with the person because I do very much so. Yeah. But when I find that a tactic that is needed, so mm -hmm. let's just say that we found that that individual's protein intake was on average 25 grams a day, which wow. you and I know is, you know, it's very common. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't just say, okay, you have to do this and we're going to get it to that. And like, that's just what we have to do. I go, Hey, here's, they see it and they know that that's too low. Even folks that know nothing know that that's not right. So they, the first is them seeing it and going, holy shit. Okay, yeah. good. That's step one. They have to see it for themselves. Um, so I've learned how to tell less and ask more questions and go, okay, 
So if you're at this amount and we need to be at this amount, or this has, you know, A has to change to B, um, what are your thoughts on, based on your lifestyle right now, what yeah. are a couple things you can do that you know will work for you that will accommodate that? And they go, they come up with their own solution. All I do is I tinker with it and adjust it until they're like, yep, boom. And most of the time, if it if they come up with a solution based on something that I've taught them that they didn't know before, they will fix it themselves. So less telling, less giving, less more listening and refining so that they give the answer for how to fix it for themselves. Because man, Damien, I mean, I can only imagine how stubborn you are with all this stuff, but same with me. If I, if if I'm just with someone and all of a sudden they're telling me all the things that I have to do, but they kind of don't know a thing about what I'm actually doing. Mm. And they're not letting me come up with my own solutions on mm. it for myself based on them. Mm. I'm just like, I shut down. I'm like, I can't wait to get off. Like I'll I'll just actually hang up. I don't yeah, want to talk to that. I anymore. see where you're going with that. Um if there's somebody gives me um five things to do I, i'll I, I'll i'll switch off to some extent because it's in the too hard basket but i can focus on one so it's sometimes i'm, I'm mature no not mature <laughs> i've had enough times <laughs> like, i'm not mature yet <laughs> yeah no I've, I've had enough times that i'm going hang okay just hold it there i know you got those things but how about i just do this one or two so i then do it with the clients um and i love what you're doing there is you're empowering not and uh, you're an empowering teacher you're empowering nutrition and it's what you do with the kids it's like hey you need to do this and this what's your plan yeah yeah exactly what is your plan and then just hmm. like shut up yeah which is hard for us because we um I, I learned the term drinking from a fire hose don't don't do that to someone <laughs> <laughs> no just because we had to do it doesn't mean that you know everybody should so yeah that's i mean i would imagine is it sort of similar in when you're training people with how not to die is like how how, how do you handle folks that are coming to to see you oh that's super different and super easy i i, I love that stuff um yeah yeah we talked offline before where i'm transitioning to um i've always wanted to share my special forces training and, and knowledge and, and the police experience as well um but i've taught the how i've taught it i've taught a self-defense course uh for 20 20 years now um probably longer 22 years um and it's just re, it's it's just regimented um and the military knows how to train people that's it and so um on the command move, you'll move this here and the blah, 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 blah. So um, I, I talked to them in, in the beginner's uh, course. It's always the same. Um, the, the pattern of, of different types of students are always the same. People who have not been exposed to um, confrontation and violence, people that have, and, and people that are sporty, people that are elderly, people that are, are, are broken. And it's super easy. Um, I'll take you through the basics. So military uh, instruction, and we're not yelling at them. We're just doing it in a, in a basic way because, come on, military guys are crayon guys. <laughs> um, we teach them the basic way, and then when they don't get it, then we're going to go in and have them learn from each other, learn from their six, the, the guy doing it right and the guy doing it wrong. So we've got group learning. Oh, okay, I see that there. Damien said this, but I can also see that guy doing it. And then I see that person doing it wrong, so I'll do that. And then um, just bring up those those common faults and then the individual faults and, and then teaching them the why. Hey, that's cool that you do it that way. And I don't mind as long as you win, but here we'll practice it this way as much as you can then on the day. So dealing with those different people, it's, it's, it's a package that's easy to follow. It was invented uh, well before World War II, but really brought into an actual program in World War II with the... Um, uh, uh, the, the OSS, the C, precursor to the CIA, the, the commandos. And, and I teach that to anyone. And I say to them at the start of the course, look, this has to be taught to soldiers. We're not too bright. Has to be taught in a week before they deploy to World yeah. War II. So you got to remember it. And you got to remember under stress. And it, I can't teach you 100 things. I can't teach you these, these high skill things, which I can't remember. My seven-year-old knows more jujitsu than I do. Awesome stuff. If you ask me to do an armbar on the left arm, no chance. Um, and this is going to work. And we're going to teach you safely first. You know me. This is a safe environment. I'm going to work it up more and more. It's more and more stressful until at the end, you're good to go. And 
I also operate on one super important principle, Ash. If you're doing a four hour course with me and, and the online course as well, if you have to stop after the first hour, you need to go away safer. It's my duty of care to send you away safer than you were. When I did boxing, Ash, I, taught, I learned to walk for two weeks. I didn't even throw a fist. They need to go away from me a little bit safer than they were when they arrived. So if they just flinch, you know, Tony Blau, the, the flinch, the spear, if they just guard their head. So I, I have a real duty of them to do what works and but they have to be able to, to, to retain it straight away. So slightly different than the, the, the weight loss side, which is, as you said, so many factors. I love you do it remote. Um, I'm lucky that there's no negotiables on it. Whereas nutrition is like, well, I like doing this. And well, this got in the way. And then my, my kid um, was sick. So I had to go get takeaways. There's way too many variables in that. So it sounds like you're getting around it really well by that empowering way of teaching as, a, hey, when this does happen, what's your plan to get? Because you know you need to get this much protein. What's your plan when you're down at the supermarket and there's, there's nothing else around? Yep. Yeah, no, I, I, I love it. And you know what, actually... The, the question that came to mind in this uh, the other day, because and this is just a bit of a display of my my ignorance. I've been to uh, Australia a couple of times, Gold Coast and Sydney. Is so I was like, wow, is the so in my in my ignorance, I go, okay, Perth, Australia, a little bit of a chiller, maybe place than than the states. Do people feel the same urgency over there to be sufficient in? situational awareness and personal protection as compared to here like is the motivation to to be able to defend oneself high there as well like no so yeah perfect question absolutely perfect question um the answer is no and and that's why that's why i did how not to die guy online for the world you know really um my customers um because they're customers i guess because they're buying a course um, uh, a USA predominantly, UK and uh, and Australia last. The answer is no. And but classically, what will happen is a certain suburb here, let's say Scarborough, uh, is super safe, super safe. Nothing's really going on. Maybe at night, and you know, don't go there on a Friday night at ten o'clock at night. But apart from that, it's family time. Well, like five weeks ago, there was a guy in the middle of a, a four-way intersection sm swinging a metal pole around and smashed nine cars. You know, in America, he'd be shot. Uh, every Australian police officer that, that uh, commented on their videos said they would have run him down in self-defense of others. Um, but that'll be talked about for the next 10 years. But if you're one of those nine cars there, that's yeah. what I want to, I want to, um, I want to reach you. And you know, like I said, that's it's not in the forefront of the mind. It doesn't happen every single day, but when it does, if you weren't one of those nine pe people that, um, if you were one of those nine people that got their car window smashed, what's the next stage? I would want those people to be empowered with the knowledge that we have, which is super easy. Um, and I'm going to hopefully position myself as the the subject matter expert to speak to that with the media, um, you know, on the television, and, and bringing that awareness to people. Okay. Yep, got it. Yeah, got it. So we better move back to GST because we've touched on the the GST for for you, the nutrition and surprising weight loss, and the and your successes are phenomenal. Uh, I wanted to talk about business success because it's great to see you move through, and I know there was some tough times in the middle there, but you've got so much better in the last three years or move gst has, has progressed so much in the last three years and that three years as we well know it was was um business uh kaput you know bankruptcy for, for some crystal hatch again we spoke about her it's a great example she said transition to a, a, a an office sort of role rather than being the first calisthenics um company a, around for adult uh gymnastic strength training i think so how did you, through that lockdown period, whatever the hell you're going to call it, but 2020, 20, 2021, 20, 22, two, how did you succeed so well and get to where you are now for the company? Such a great question. And there's many factors that go into that. So, uh, I mean, I'll just kind of lay it out there. Thank you. I was in Canada visiting family for 
the two weeks leading into uh, sort of the first news broadcasts that there was some sort of a concern about a virus from China. It's funny because I was in New Zealand when Australia ran out of toilet paper. (laughs) (laughs) I think New Zealand ran out of toilet paper. It's like, wow. At least we know now if everyone thinks the world's going to end, that toilet paper's the hot commodity. No one's worried about food or water, but toilet paper. So, yeah. (laughs) Um, so, uh, during that time in Canada, um, I worked, uh, through most days to launch, um, to launch our online space because it right. had been in demand for a while. So the timing there was very coincidental. We got our first two to three overseas online clients during that time that we were fully custom coaching. And I say we, because Jay and I started working in that space together, yeah. uh, Coach Jason Lapiana, so he's been with me in that space from the beginning. Um, so, do you guys that, co-own it? From what I saw on the website, no, 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 no. Jay's head coach, um, but our business model is such that uh, all coaches are um, very, very incentivized to grow and grow and grow. In other words, they're not just paid by the hour, and you can only do this many hours right. to make money um i think you know that's become apparent to a lot of folks uh yeah. who have been following us for years because usually the coach churn at gyms is very very high and ours high. is extraordinary low like yeah. uh you know and and that's the teamwork that goes on to make that happen is, is monumental but anyway so um we were lucky to to launch that because it, it, it did provide us with another dimension to draw from but you know uh you are probably potentially the same way, but I, I never, when I started to see this, how the news, the media was covering this, I was like, what's going on? Like, what, what really, what are we dealing with now? Yeah. Okay. I remember being, going through the airports back to Florida and there was just so much hype about this thing from China. And I just was shaking my head. I just, I knew I'm like, this doesn't, it just doesn't, it didn't pass didn't pass the sniff test yeah exactly yeah so get back to florida and you know international travel i think was shutting down fairly quick and i'm like okay this is interesting let's kind of see and then and then just the 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 rumors of state by state and then you know new york and then uh okay all right and uh, you know, my, my, my business partner, um, uh, his name is uh, Jim. Um, he's in his uh, early, uh, early fifties, very experienced in dealing with the world of bullshit. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, he was a uh, training move every morning. And so we would have little chats and Florida was one of the last States to shut down, but we, he'd ask me every day. All right. So what are you going to do if this, and what are you going to do with that? And I'm like, I don't know. Wow, we're just gonna keep we're just gonna keep going and see what this it kind of ends up being. And but from the beginning, all the scoreboards of the death toll and the, I'm like, what? The, like, it never it it never occurred to me that this thing was as it was being made out to be by the media. So, yeah. but here's what we did. I was like, all right, none of us in the in the first two weeks knew. Nobody knew. It was just yeah. this intense bombardment of like death and fear and destruction so i'm like let's just see I'm willing to give it a chance so you know we just did some we, we started doing our classes online uh none of none of the coaches backed off one bit like no one was scared for three seconds yeah. at least not that they articulated so we did some stuff online and we're like okay but i i'd go i'd go out in public and there's people at Home Depot and there's people in grocery stores and there's people around, but there's all this fear and it, it, it never, it never made sense to me. So when, uh, of course we're in Florida. So at the end, everybody knows we got pretty lucky here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but when the time came for Florida to shut down and all the businesses to go with it, I, I remember going into that and I was like, stay the course, stay and the you- course. It, and it, go ahead. And you had that online that you'd started to initiate already. You're sort of four weeks into that, I'm, I'm guessing. Yep. yep, we had online clients. And then we, we were like, okay, so again, navigating this for the first time. Mm. Um, all right, let's, let's have, let's host and record our regular classes on, on Zoom. So yep. we 
we did we did that for like a well we did it for way longer than a week but we did it seriously for about a week yeah and then it just became more and more apparent to me that this didn't make sense the data was being skewed we all know the story now and i'm like if it i i promised myself and i i promised jim and and, and i said if it becomes apparent that by having people come in and out of move to do stuff that we're putting anyone's health truly at risk, mm -hmm. like truly at risk. So they can go to grocery stores and liquor stores and all the other places, but okay. So I, I like the, that's, that's interesting. You know, I am, and thank you for staying on point with the business, but I love that you made a duty to care decision with integrity. You didn't do the, the tinfoil hat decision or the other way decision. You actually made a very logical decision based on your the safety of your members versus what else is going on. So great kudos to you on that and, and really interesting there. Yep. Yeah, no, thank you. I mean, it. Uh, you know, A, just again, I was waiting for that moment where it became apparent or somewhat apparent that we were putting people at risk by mm -hmm. having people come to the facility. And that moment never arrived. And right. the further we got into this, the more obvious it became that we were being screwed with big time. Yeah. So then it comes down to, all right, from a legal standpoint, um, you know, here we have the Bill of Rights in the United States Constitution. Okay. We have that. So we all know that what was going on was well beyond the scope and reach of the government okay but, but so, then on the other side it's an it's an emergency so you've got emergency provisions which again you now you're talking legal you're not talking justice justice isn't the same as the legal system but yeah you've got a business and you've got a legal system you're going to have to start to to deal with here so what were you seeing that was going to keep you going and and how do you navigate up well, what I was seeing that was going to keep us going was um, more and more data coming out and our governor starting to, he, he quickly started to reopen certain divisions. Right. Um, okay. Florida was only kind of on the lowdown for two months ish. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe three, but mo a lot of businesses were continuing to, to function. And anyway. right. Right. Um, so you know, it, it came, it, it, it did, it came down to the nitty gritty where, uh, you know, we had the share, you know, I remember, I'll never forget the day I was on a zoom call at my desk. I was at my desk and Jason was across the facility working yep. with, uh, working with someone and the sheriffs walk in and well, that was the first. Oh, wow. <laughs> and wow. I've, I've trained with the sheriffs. I I've, I've done some fun things and, you know, he walks in and he's like, Hey, and I'm like, what's up? I'm on a zoom call. How can yeah. I help you? And uh, he wanted he wanted me to leave. And wow! Like, wow! Then there were provisions for well, I'm the owner, so I can be there. But that guy over there, why is he there? He's not the owner. I'm like, okay, now really, are we getting into like I'm the owner, so I can stay? But uh, you know, this gentleman over <laughs> here, is 25 feet away, and uh, yeah, he can't really. Yeah. So so now we're making up rules, and okay, so. Um, you know, we got into it a little bit and I said, Hey, you know, you know what, honestly, I just, I was like, uh, I, I totally appreciate where you're coming from. I'm going to get back to my business. And you know, the, the, the gentleman and his, his, his uh, partner left, um, but sheriffs only come if they're being called on. So what I was very disappointed in, as I learned is that any business that looked like it was open, like there were cars in the parking lot, for example, mm. Well, you'd have neighbors or people driving by doing the tatty tail game, which we found that to be happening around the world. Um, so then the sheriff's responds to calls. So Look, I must I must admit, uh, yeah. Ash, and, and I want to push on to the business. It must be something in human um, nature. The reason I say that is, um, you know, this country was one of the most um, uh, locked down countries in the world and, and masked and so on. And um, if I saw someone not wearing a mask, I'd go, oh, it was a thought in my head. Oh, why are they not? So this is the uniform mentality. There must be something in human nature. So I'm not going to go on the blame side, but the sheriffs had walked into your business and you were literally trying to navigate this. 
how did you how did you manage to push on and be successful what happened from there we just pushed on honestly we just pushed on we continued to do what we knew was right so we did our stuff on zoom we had a lot of uh, pr uh, private training clients do their sessions with us on zoom right and if they were comfortable coming in they came in because i was there you know they just it, we we left it up to the discretion of the person and we had a lot of people that continued to come in because gradually everyone else started to realize that we were kind of being fed a handful of nonsense so legally um, you were allowed to be open the, the you weren't you weren't breaking any laws at that stage no you could say we were bending mandates yeah but as far as like you know that's really what you can say bending mandates but yeah. um you know were we breaking the law well no there's no established law that says you know you you as a small business can't continue to operate uh but home depot can and we've like got it We've got the example of uh, one of the gym owners in the US, you know, literally getting fined one hundred twenty thousand dollars, and 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 there's the, all all the cops coming in and shutting it down. So I'm intrigued, you know, that sort of twenty twenty, your business in an amazing place now. What happened to create that growth in that in that sort of um, that that couple of years? Was it the online? Was it uh, that that um, your rapport, your coaches, what, what got it to there? What, did you have two streams of the in-person and the online? Yes. Um, and really, I just, I ha it, it's two words, like keep going. Like, wow. All, I love that. Just, you know, anyone who owns a business will understand through all that. And then the after when it was sort of publicly okay to operate and people started to be less scared to come back in again, we just, like we we just kept going. We didn't quit. No one quit. Do, you know, uh, I wanted to, you know, throw up half the week every week. Yeah. But Coach Jay was, you know, you can't break that guy. And very strong. Every coach through that was just solid. And we kept going and we kept going. We kept going. We just we just didn't quit is has yeah. how it worked. And then, you know, for for me having the thirty thousand foot view, it's refining systems, making sure that. The systems we have in place are working and they're being followed and that we're taking good care of people and okay the next level now we're going to add this system in so it's just layering successful actions on top of successful actions and being a you know real clear as a as you know i you'd say the the, the and i say this with respect to my coaches because they are very strong leaders themselves but um we had to trust each other so we just yeah. did it and you know, quarter by quarter by quarter we kept growing and growing and growing and we just didn't look back we didn't quit and um, you just keep going through the bullshit. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love what you got there. I may have the may have the title for the show, but perseverance. You're talking about there. Um, you, know, you see these motivational memes and all these things, but um, what is it? Henry Ford got knocked back 150 times before they said yes to the one of one of his little things. I mean, yeah. that guy should have been crying in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. But, you know, I, I say that with all due respect to those that were across the states and in countries like you were and, and in Canada, where, you know, if you like looked sideways outside of the mandate, you just got, you know, a throat punch but yeah. in, in different directions. I mean, things would have been different for us had we not been in Florida, I think for sure. And yeah. um, probably would have, you know, everyone made a pretty strong pivot online and maybe that's the direction we would have gone. We just, uh, a number of things kind of happened to work out for us. And the, the top thing was keeping going when it became obvious that there wasn't a true need to stop and give up. A true, yeah, perfect. Uh, you've painted the picture really well. You know, you were already looking at adding another layer, which was the online um, coaching, which is brilliant because why not push it worldwide when you can do that? Uh, and then you persevered with what you're doing. You kept one foot in front of the other, only looking at each, each financial quarter. So you're only looking at three months, clever, and, and just not letting that go backwards. And then on the other side of it, you come out with a, a very robust model clear in your um in your business direction and what works clear in your you, you've you picked what works and kept doing it and now you got those two streams uh i i think and you, you did mention some people pivoted heavily towards online and some of them have dropped because i don't want to do everything online i also want some in person as well uh i, I think back to tony blower um what an amazing realization he had 2020 he can't tour around the world and the countries and he's got a, a company with hundreds of employees 
he needs to keep going. So he pivoted to online and he's got the, the in-person sort of classes he's got going. Now, these people that were successful see what's going on and then some of them get a chance to work on the business, not just working in the business, which you've been pretty clear of. You said the 3,000 foot view. Uh, you, you mentioned it a couple of times in some different wording. So that sort of really sums up for me and maybe the listener, a, a business mentality, but not just Ash going, hey, just go online. You've summed up the big picture of perseverance, sticking together, teamwork, um, to just keep going. And it really is. You, you, if you keep going and, and have something that's workable, it will work out in the end. And you know, going back to your I'm just lucky sort of thing, you make, you make your luck. Yes. I'll, I'll, yes. Yes. No. Well, I'll, I'll agree with you and then we'll, we'll be like, yeah, we make our luck and then luck, more luck comes uh, our way. More good people come in, into our path, right? I've got two questions. One's like literally a, a straight up question and answer and then uh, a direction to go next. Um, <laughs> I, I still don't know how the hell I'm a podcast host because I'm just a, an operator and a fireman to be fair. And um, yeah, clearly you're just a crayon guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm supposed to do this two word check in. Now, I was very clear the, the Americans do it. Did you say check in? Um, but a two word check in with someone. And what it is, Ash, is a, a two feeling words. So it's like an adjective, but using feeling words. A two word check in from you on how are you going now? You know, it's, it's February 2023. What's a two word check in that you can provide us? Of how, um, so it, it, it how yeah, you're so feeling we, now um you could relate it to move you could relate it to where you're at now compared to nine years ago but two words from you how you're feeling go it's a great question um hmm. there's sort of two sides to that because one sure. is uh hmm Moving through. Oh, I like that. No, I like that. Next one. Yeah. Uh, and no, nobody of any level, uh, they're all stumped and they all got to take that step back because it's not our wheelhouse, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Moving through some difficult stuff since the beginning of the year personally and then with business, uh, learning how to continue to be better and more effective at what we're doing so moving awesome. through <laughs> awesome hey chris chris van sant you know i stumped him he had the same look on his face as you did you know really? delta, delta operator the catcher saddam is saying and his one was um work in progress yeah yeah he's like shit those are three words <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> moving yeah. through about, may i ask you the same question <laughs> yeah absolutely look um happy uh and and optimistic uh, actually, no. I'll take I'll take off happy and go inspired and optimistic. So, from the show here, um, inspired from what you've said, from what I've learned from you in the last hour, inspired and optimistic. Cool, cool. Uh, and the last question is: Where to uh, from here for um, Move GST? And we sort of opened with that because you you mentioned a possible name change. So, what's the the broad brushstrokes direction? For, for movegst.com well we will uh you you'll always be able to find us at movegst.com so g s is and sam t is and tom that'll probably always be our website so let's go movegst.com instagram uh is uh move you just type you know move training calisthenics and then my full name ashley r gas i'm still a little bit shadow banned so <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you if you start at um, movegst.com you will find us and we're very easy to reach through um through there yeah um, i might have said the question wrong or there might have been an interruption where to for the company um for here the broad brush strokes of where you're where it's going what are we going to see in the next few years with, oh. with uh with the company Ah, okay. Great question. So in terms of the, at, at the facility, so here locally, um, well, we're, you'll, you'll see us buy a building and expand our space so that awesome. we can, excuse me one sec, I'm just, just deleted phone call coming in. 
um, so that we can um, we can do more and accommodate more and just change the setup of the space a little bit. So you'll see uh, a lot of our focus is um, perfecting and growing here locally for all the folks yep. that uh, are after us. Uh, having I, I want every single coach to have a kick ass career that they can look back and go that was worth my time. Awesome. That's like that to me. I can die a happy woman, uh, hopefully not in the near future, if all, <laughs> all of my coaches, if everyone's set up and they go, you know what, Ash got hit by a bus yesterday, but we're good. Like that's, that's what I, that's, that's what I want in the next, um, you know, th three, three years. Um, so solidify everything in the facility here locally. And then in the online space, um, really be known as the brand to go for when folks are looking for what we do at the facility. Yeah, brilliant. I love that. Uh, for both of those, you should be positioned as a, as a subject matter expert. You do it in the way you explain things, you teach, and then obviously you're, you're business savvy because every every business person, I think back to, who would be the one, um, poor man, rich man, or whatever the, the hell that one was, Robert Kiyosaki, he was talking about a turnkey business, one that doesn't rely on you. And that's the point uh, of, of, of what you're doing, um, working towards. And it's interesting uh, watching your, your transition. Nine years ago, you were not a businesswoman, or is a, are we supposed to say business person now? <laughs> um, oh, you say businesswoman, you say whatever you want. This is our <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. We're Look, it's obviously your business seven. You've got some great mentors. You talked about um, Jim, I think you said, has, has mentored you very well and you're in the right space there. Um, really cool to see that you're going to expand with the, the physical side of things. Um, Ash, it's been brilliant having you on. Uh, I just love sharing your journey there. And I, I didn't know how you navigate all that. I, I, I really wanted to share that with the listeners. And um, yeah, love what you're putting out there. Your communication style is is spot on. The videos, um, there, Gianluca Viacci, I think a very guy, a very big guy on Instagram, bit of a silver fox. Um, he always does videos, and one of the reasons why is because they can't be misconstrued. Words can be misconstrued. Um, a picture can be misconstrued. You know, businesswoman. If I wrote that, it could be misconstrued but your videos can't and the videos that you're putting out there and one of the latest ones was your, your throwing video was is just absolutely brilliant and it's um it's, it's gonna work so it's great to watch your success <laughs> thank you well um i mean damien thank you for taking the time to do this i'd like to do it regularly um and uh, i'll ping rob and uh just you know get let him know hey this is you guys are going to be epic because uh, we got we got to keep our circle circle growing so say hi to like kirk and my goal this year is to uh, get on Joe Rogan's podcast. I would love to sit down with him and have a scotch and a cigar and get into whatever, <laughs> get, get into whatever we can get into. So, um, yeah, I'll put that out there, but uh, definitely I'll, I'll ping Rob right now as well. Yeah, awesome. Love it. Thanks, Ash. It was lovely to, to see you. Great to be able to share your story. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You know, thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. Hi, I'm Damien Porter, former Special Forces Operator, High Performance Living Coach from HowNotToDie.com.au. And you can listen to my Straight Talk Mind and Muscle podcast, sponsored by RealKetonesAustralia.com, the best and most effective ketone supplement on the market to reduce anxiety, enhance brain performance, and supply twice as much energy as glucose. Thanks for watching. Hi, thanks for watching. I'm Damien Porter, former Special Forces Operator, and check out my new project for 2023 at hownottodie.com.au where I've combined all my special forces training and police officer experience to help others. Thanks for watching.